Hi, Sam. This is how we do it. Is this Sam's childhood or youth? Uh, yeah, my youth. I didn't. I never listened to that kind of music. Can you move over a bit? Can you not sit so close to me? Once again. <laughs> That's my youth. That's more like the eighties. Come stand so close to me. Yeah. Sam, I, I have bad news for you. Good. I we're not. We're not. News. We're not that funny. What? We're yes, not that we funny. Are. No, we're not. I we was told too. by a friend of mine, Adam. He said, eh, "Okay, you're not that funny, guys." How rude! That's it. I'm stopping this right now. <laughs> okay. He's now officially on my my ignore list. You have a lot of people on that list. Yep. Now, next time he sends me something, trash, trash, <laughs> trash. Next time he wants to play in my band on short notice, trash. I think I really touched your nerve. Next time he I... wants me to listen to something he said, trash. I think I really touched your nerve. You did. No, he touched your nerve. You're just you're just reporting it. You probably you know I made that up. You just ratted him out. No, I just made I made that may have made that up. That was just me maybe using Adam. You as specifically I know, said I know, Adam I know. said that we're not funny. I know, not that funny, not not funny. He said, like the stuff on the gospel is great, but but you're not as funny as you think you're at the start. He said, have you thought about just doing something serious instead of something funny for a long time and then serious? Okay. No. Can we get started now? On the serious stuff? I guess so. Now that right. my now that my ego is hurt. <laughs> and I'm feeling sad. My work here is done. It's actually, a great I can actually time go to now talk about the tax collector. Actually it is. I'm a lot like a Pharisee. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Jesus' point was we're all a lot like the Pharisee. <laughs> no, specifically me in this case making you feel bad. Oh yeah, I guess. Looking so. down on you for not being funny, etc. We have friends or a couple and the fellow's a Protestant minister and his wife, they're, they're actually French, or she's a French citizen. She works for like Revenue Canada equivalent of France. So they were visiting the first time we met them together. Our friends have known for years. And she said, it's like the Pharisee and the tax collector. Their marriage, get it? It's pretty fun. Speaking of which, why did I mention that? Because this coming Sunday, the passage, which is from Luke chapter 18, is about two characters in the story who would be familiar characters in Jesus' day. If you've been following this series, if you know anything about the Bible and, and the Gospels, you know about the Pharisee and the tax collector. And um, what I felt was really interesting about this passage is that Jesus sets up a comparison. And really the point of the comparison is that comparisons are always a bad idea. Because the man at the front of the temple praying is the Pharisee. The man at the back of the temple bowed down um, not even raising his eyes to heaven, looking down, basically, praise, oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's the tax collector at the back. Officially, bad guy. The guy at the front, officially, good guy. Officially, holy, the Pharisee, basically talks to God and tells him how great he is, especially compared to the tax collector at the back. And um, what Jesus is saying at the end, to summarize this passage, is, when, when I lift myself up, which I do a lot, by the way, um, I will be humbled. And I've actually experienced that. And that's actually God's favor to people who lift themselves up, as I sometimes do. He humbles us. Um, and on the other side of it, people who are humble within themselves will be lifted up. And that's, that's God's work. That's the way God does things. Uh, so especially... This is addressed to those who are convinced of their own righteousness and despise everyone else. Now, you may not be like that. You may not be like that. But I can be like that, comparing myself to other people and saying they don't really understand, they're out of it, etc. It's so easy to come across and to actually, therefore, to be arrogant, meaning lifting yourself up and putting other people down, at least in your mind. And I think this is a really important um, passage about who we are in relation to God, because in relation to God, we're all on the same level, because he's infinite, we're all finite. And that's hmm. our backgrounder for this week. Wow, we're going to get a print version of the backgrounder ever again? or Actually, I had one, I just forgot to send it to you. Oh, too We'll bad. have one for next week. So. Okay. Yep. All right, Sam. Watch for that in your inbox. For next week. Unless you're not signed up to receive the backgrounder. 
You should be. You, you're my and now you should be ashamed of yourself, as I am. Right now. Of them or of yourself? Of myself. Oh, because you're ego. Because you're not that funny. Yeah, because I'm not that funny. <laughs> so, I don't know why they'd be funny. I only ever wanted to be funny. Now I've been told I'm not funny. Uh, I was, I was, that was all I had, Adam. <laughs> that was it. That was all I had. And it's gone. You've crushed it. Okay. Thank you. That's God exalting the humble and humbling the exalted. Yes. Okay. That's the sound of my heart breaking. <laughs> oh. Are we going to pray? Sure. God, our Father in heaven, we praise and thank you for this day. We are always so grateful to be here together and to be able to share this time where we reflect on your word and where hopefully your Holy Spirit comes and inspires us and inspires those who are watching and listening to receive the word in our hearts and to make use of it, to allow it to transform us. And um, we just ask you, Lord, to, to allow this message tonight, the message of uh, the gospel of the tax collector and the Pharisee as they approach you to prayer, that we would be able to approach you with a humility and with a right sense of who we are and who you are, and always seeking your mercy, always seeking your forgiveness, for we are sinful people and we, we desperately need you, O oh Lord. Come Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I pay, pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Are we going to read it twice? Yeah. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. you to take a few moments of silence just to reflect on the passage that we just heard and then uh, we'll share a little bit and you can also come forward with whatever is in your mind and heart. Mint. Thank you. What's that silent? Silence is an interior thing. What do you
part. <laughs> okay. You right, everybody? Hold on to your seats. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so this, I don't know, it seems kind of obvious to me. I imagine this is why Jesus put it, Jesus said this. So he, he's, it's kind of hyperbole. I mean, people don't normally actually say this. Sure. Right? I think it's interesting that he's, it says he spoke this prayer to himself. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's, that's, I think, just a really... This is the Pharisee. This is the Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. Mm -hmm. So a prayer normally is addressed to God. This prayer was addressed to himself. Which is funny. He probably thought he was praying to God. But really it was a self-centered prayer. Um, the focus was himself and his good deeds and the things he had done and the fact that he was not as bad in his mind as other people around him. Mm -hmm. And so he says, I thank you that I'm not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. And then these are the things I do. I pay twice a week, or fast twice a week, and I pay tithes my whole income. And I have... I've just been again. I don't want to. I don't want to do what the Pharisee is doing right now, comparing myself to other people, because I have certainly done this too, in my in my mind. I've spoken this prayer to myself before, mm -hmm. where I think to myself, "Well, at least I'm not as bad as so and so," right? Or look at them. I'm so glad that I don't have that struggle, or I'm not involved in that bad thing, or whatever. I've heard this a version of this in the church so many times. Heard or kind of witnessed it. Mm -hmm. It's a very easy thing to do and a very easy thing to fall into. To make ourselves feel better, to make ourselves seem more holy, more virtuous, more righteous. We tend to compare ourselves to people that we perceive as worse. It's just something that we do. I think if we were honest, all of us have done it. Um... And it reminds me of something that was in one of the Alpha videos. I can't remember which one. But they're talking, and maybe they've taken it out. It Maybe something from the previous series. But anyway, they basically they're talking about this and how when we stack up against other people, we might be really, we might look really good, mm -hmm. right? We might even end up near the top if you're a really good person and you haven't done anything, you know, any serious serious sins let's say like if you compare yourself to you know murderers and adulterers and what this guy does right but when you compare yourself to god that's when the thing pulls apart right because god is holy yep he's perfect he's sinless and we are not mm -hmm. and their point in that video is that is even if your sins in the eyes of others is, are small and they're they still Create the divide between us and God, between yourself and God. A divide that only Jesus can bridge. Right. So comparing ourselves to others doesn't make any sense in that sense because it's uh, only in comparison to God that we should worry about. So I've thought about the same point a lot that you're, and I, I don't have a resolution to this, but it seems to me pretty obvious that there are a whole category of people who are personally innocent of sin, mm -hmm. even though all of humanity is separated from God, which we call sin with a singular sin, right? Obviously babies or people are not capable of making rational decisions. Right, yeah. So is that person in God's eyes as far from him as people who have actually done terrible things? That's the question I ask myself. Mm. I think the answer is, I think it has to do with looking at ourselves as individuals, which we're not. We're not separate. In, we are each individually responsible for our actions, but we're not just individuals. We're part of humanity. The Bible, even Paul writes like this, refers to us all collectively as Adam. Mm -hmm. We're all in Adam, speaking of our friend. Um, I meant the man referred to in the beginning of the Bible, mm -hmm. the ancestor of humanity, and Jesus is referred to as the new Adam. So we're not actually able to separate ourselves from other people. Maybe that's one of the things this tax uh, Pharisee is doing. He is saying, I'm not like that. I'm separate. Even the distance, 
that Jesus uses is like, no, that's nothing to do with me. That's his problem, not my problem. Mm -hmm. But to use the language I believe that's used in quantum mechanics, we are entangled. <laughs> quantum entanglement is some, some weird like phenomenon. It. Where it's like one particle, some sub, subatomic part, particle does something way over here in the universe, and all of a sudden it's somehow connected to the status of another particle that may be like trillions of... No, a different particle does exactly the same thing. Right. They're entangled. They're, they're linked. Right. Yeah. Um, very cool. Very weird stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, I've been hearing a lot recently uh, about what happens in a community, for instance, where I live, and I know this is true of Hanover as well. When a, there are some people in the community, in my community and here, who have addictions that are not just about an individual struggle, but also affect their whole behavior, can be really destructive for people around them. Whose problem is that? Is it anyone else's problem? Is, is, the, is our goal primarily to sort of restrict that person's life so that they're not harming other people? How are we connected? Are we actually connected with people who are obviously harming other people? One response is just to say, well, love everybody. I think that's a starting point, but not enough. Because that doesn't actually deal with the reality of people who are neighbors to someone who's harming other people, which I know is happening here and, and where I live and probably where we all live. Mm. Um, we can't just ignore that. But nor is it the case that, you know, let them get their act together or we'll throw them in jail. That doesn't actually make things better because, as, as probably pretty well known, if you put someone in jail for a while, they, they are probably going to get drawn into worse criminal activity and probably worse addictions and that kind of, that whole way. It's, it's a way of training people for crime. Jail, right? Prison, whatever you want to call it. So... The phrase I was focusing on, which might help, and I'd like to, you to respond to, is they both say one thing at the start that's the same, which is they start their prayer. The Pharisee and tax collector, they say, oh God. So, at least in their words, they're, they're looking at the distance, as you were talking about, between... The, like, it is kind of weird to think that we can talk, that I can talk to God, you can talk to God, you can talk to God, and he's listening. It's a weird thought to me. Why would it be that, let's just say the word creator, because a lot of people refer to a creator, that the creator of everything actually cares enough to want to listen to me. That's a mm -hmm. weird thought. Yeah. Yet many people, like me, and you, and lots of people who are not necessarily churchgoers or even formerly believers, pray in the sense that they get their hearts, lift up their hearts to God. That's what prayer basically is, right? So mm -hmm. both of these characters in this parable of the story of Jesus are reaching out to God with the expectation that he's listening and I think that creates what Jesus is doing here is he's giving us a God's eye view of humanity like how does God actually see us which includes like innocent babies people who are not responsible for their actions as well as people who are like willfully harming other people and most of us somewhere in between somewhere in the middle yeah. And I think he sees us as entangled. Connected. A mess. We're a mess. Oh, a mess. Collectively. Yeah. We are entangled. But tangled I, also means like a mess, right? Tangled up. I like that. It reminds me of something we talked about recent, in a recent Thursday Night Appetizer, which was um, about how like the devil seeks to, to divide. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit calls us into unity. Right. Right. We talk a lot about unity. Right? Yeah. And... Um, we are unified in good ways, but also in our sin. Like we're we're also entangled or tied together mm -hmm. in our sinfulness as well as a community, as as a unified people. Right. And then what the what the Pharisee wants to do is create a division. Right. Wants to basically set it'll draw a line here and say, I'm on this side. Mm -hmm. And physically his posture too. Mm -hmm. The the posture of the two people in the story. Mm -hmm. He says he takes up his place. Mm -hmm. Which I can only assume is at the front. Yeah. Right? The, yep, yep. the place of a Pharisee, mm -hmm. leader in the in the religious community, would be at the front, where everybody can see him. Sure. So there, that's him. That's his posture. And on the other hand, the tax collector, it says he stood off at a distance. So there's even like a physical separation from them in mm -hmm. the story. Um, 
Yeah, I, li I like that, that we're kind of all, like what you're saying about the, the, someone that's harming other people. We're all connected. Um, not one of us, it says in Scripture somewhere, not one of us is, is innocent, right? Romans 3, all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Sin. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking of the, the one, there's not, there's not one righteous, not even one. Okay. I can't remember which person it is. Sure. Maybe you know. There's not one, not one that is righteous, not even one. Um, that sh that should be a freeing notion to us. I think it sounds depressing. Why do you think it's freeing? I it sounds depressing, but okay. And this is the other thing I was thinking of. Other than that one, um, he spoke this prayer to himself. Mm -hmm. I don't. So it's obviously Jesus is pointing to the tax collector as he yeah. has humility in his heart. Yeah. He's saying to God, be merciful to me, a sinner, which is a really famous prayer mm -hmm. and probably one of the simplest prayers you could pray. I recommend praying it yeah. often, but his posture is wrong. Whose posture? The tax collector. Also wrong? His posture is wrong because, and maybe maybe this is before Jesus, well, maybe this is the way, mm -hmm. this is the way he felt. He felt sinful and he felt ashamed. Yeah. And so he stood off at a distance. But what I want to tell you and you and me is that we don't have to stand off at a distance. That Jesus came to save us and he loves us and he wants to give us his mercy. Mm -hmm. um, there's a line from a song which I really love. Um, it's called Kyrie Eleison by Matt Marr and uh, a few other people. Which means Lord have mercy. Lord, have, It means Lord have mercy in Greek. And um, it's a, a line we say in the Mass and during the bridge of that song, it says, um, something, uh, God who pardon all our sins, so ready to forgive, you delight to show your mercy. Mm -hmm. And it's that word delight, you delight to show your mercy. Right. And then we repeat that line in the song over and over again. God delights in showing us mercy. And he doesn't want us to stand far off. I think of like a father when a child has done something wrong mm -hmm. and they recognize it. You actually want to embrace that child, right? You want the child close, not far. We may feel like we can't be close to God, like we've offended him. Maybe we have. Maybe we've done something terrible. Yeah. But he wants us close. Like he so, wants us in his presence. And he wants to give us his mercy and his forgiveness. That's just what I, I just... Don't stand far off. Don't think of God as like far away and like I can't go to him because of my sin. He actually wants us close. That's okay. How's that? You're making me think. Okay. Which is good for me. <laughs> I need to think. Um, Our tendency is to isolate ourselves and yeah. get something wrong. Yeah. Right? And okay. sh shame makes us do that. Right. Right. But that's not actually what God wants. Right. He desire he delights to show his mercy. Okay, because the very last line is. The one who humbles himself will be exalted. These are Jesus' words, the message. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. The one who humbles himself will be exalted. The one who's standing at the back, maybe in shame. It seems like shame to me. Yeah. I don't know. But you know what? Okay, what if shame, there, there's, there is, there's maybe a way in which shame is a good thing. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right? Because shame is actually a gift of recognizing. It's part of our conscience, part of what right. God gave us to, right. to know right from wrong. If you feel shame, chances are what you feel shame about is wrong. It's wrong. You yeah. shouldn't do it. But shame by itself, without grace, without God's, without Jesus' gift of redemption, mm -hmm. can become a trap. Yep. And, and shame is used and as it a... It can be a tool of the devil. I was going to say that. Yeah. What were you? Okay. But it was almost like, like this, in the sense that it can be people can be shamed just for who they are not for anything they've done by other people so mm -hmm. shame can be used to manipulate people mm -hmm. and the whole category of tax collector was a category that was considered shameful in the religious culture of that time yeah like the public category the category of public sinners sinners and tax collectors are the officially shameful people of jesus day but he's saying actually those are the people who i'm going to spend time with mm -hmm. Because the last line is, the one who is humbled, who has humbled himself, will be actually exalted, meaning, I would say, brought close to God. Yeah. So I'm going to say shame has something, there's something good about it, except it too can be a trap. Yeah. And, and if you feel like you are so stuck in shame, which I felt that I couldn't actually go to God for his mercy, 
Mm-hmm. Then you need to learn something too. Yeah. Which is, he actually delights in showing you mercy. Well, I, I mean, like both, both of us and probably those watching too have experienced this personally, but also we've seen people that are trapped in shame mm-hmm. and, and been with them. Yep. And I think sometimes that's actually the voice of the devil. Yes. Like shame, shame is shame is part of our, as it's part of our conscience and it is part of a gift God gave us to, to know right from wrong. Mm-hmm. It's it's a tool that God uses. It can also be a tool in the hands of the devil when he says, Look what you've done, you can never go back. Mm-hmm. Or you must you must stand far off. You you should be ashamed of yourself and you can't go back to God. You can't right. you know, isolate basically to isolate yourself. Um, far away like the tax collector. I think the tax collector, he's humbling himself, but it can go too far, and mm-hmm. it can become something the devil uses. When he's whispering in your ear, you can't go back. That's when I think it's really dangerous and really hot, really harmful, because that is not that is not the, the voice of God. Yeah. The voice of God is, I want to, ex- I, I want, yes, I want you to be humble, but only so I can exalt you, only so I can bring you close, close and into my presence like a father would. Right. And what Jesus does is he eats the tax collectors and sinners. And that's why the Pharisees questioned him and his disciples. Like They were asking the disciples, why is he eating with tax collectors and sinners? Because they felt, and I think this is a practical point, if you hang around those people, they're going to draw you into their sinfulness and evil. And sinfulness and evil are actually not of God. But the problem with the Pharisees, that individual and, and that, that culture that was around those individuals is, they felt that just by following the law, they could they could put themselves above those other people. So both people have to learn. I was thinking about like, like a, when you're a parent, especially of teenagers, mm-hmm. you want your teenagers to spend time with good people. Yeah. Because good people rub off goodness yeah. on, on you, right? Whereas people that are getting into trouble or doing things that are wrong, that, that can rub off on your kids too. So obviously you want them to be... So I feel like it's natural to create some of these barriers and boundaries. Mm-hmm. Like I, I can sort of relate to the Pharisees when they saw Jesus going in. They were like probably like, basically, aren't you going to become dirty or defiled or like the Pharisees or, or I mean like the tax collectors and the sinners if you're with them? Sure. Right? Is, that a, is that a concern or a worry that we should actually worry about? I, I think it is. Yeah, I really do. Mm. You need to be equipped. Exactly, you need to be equipped, and you can't do this alone. Because people, we're also are we're also supposed to be salt and light, right? Right. And the meaning there is that salt goes into the the meat and like changes it, or the food mm. and changes it and transforms it. And the light is like goes into the darkness and dispels the darkness. Jesus also uses the image of yeast going yeast, into yeah. flour so the flour can actually grow. But that's actually, like. Christians are actually called to do that, but not to be, also not to be sort of drawn in. Yeah, and also evil. not to be heroes. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, a Christian is not supposed to, we're not supposed to be operating on our own strength. Let God lift us up. He'll place us where he needs to. Sometimes we can't, well, Actually, usually we can't fix other people as mm-hmm. much as we'd like to, especially people we love or care about. You were talking about... Wouldn't that know, be nice? Both of us, we all know, you probably know people who are really struggling in life, and we're not called to be all things for them. That's that's what Jesus ultimately will be at some, some point, and is mm-hmm. in hope right now. That's why we pray for people, but we can't always be there for people. That's actually important to know. And so... Yeah, like it, it, that's why I think we need a community of people following Jesus and supporting each other, and helping each other see. You know, you really probably can't be there for that person the way you'd love to be, but you can't do it. But that's also that also means we can't write anyone off, even if we can't be there for them. You can't write anyone off because God doesn't do that. And sometimes we're that person who other people might look at and say they want to write us off because of whatever we may have done. And there are lots of examples, unfortunately, of Christians and, and Christian leaders who have harmed people, but they're still part of us. They're still one of us. They're still, we're still entangled with them. Even when we have to say, that's completely wrong. 
It's never acceptable. And we have to deal with people who are harming others. But they're still connected to us. They're still part of who we are. Yeah, we're kind of all in this together. Spiritually. Spiritually. Yeah. That's why it's important to think of Jesus as kind of like the ultimate scapegoat. Mm -hmm. He was... Shame was imposed upon him. That's what the cross was. The ultimate symbol of shame in those days. Even today, it probably would be. Like, that would that be how you really should put shame on someone else. It's in Isaiah, right? The suffering servant passage. Yeah, he bore, he bore our shame. All our shame Yeah, is in there. Yeah. Yeah. But he didn't do that just so that he could be crushed. Though that did happen. Crushed for our iniquities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Somewhere between 45 and 50 something in Isaiah, I think. Yeah. The suffering servant is called this figure. Prophetically, Isaiah talks about Jesus about hundreds Jesus. of years before the time of Jesus. Yeah. But also that Jesus is not just humbling himself for the sake of being crushed, but that in that very act, he's going to rise up and he brings life out of death, light out of darkness. You know, by his wounds, we are healed. Right. Yeah, same passage. Yeah. Um, we read it on Good Friday mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is when Jesus talks about things, like he's telling a story, he's also speaking about how he is going to do the impossible, which is to bridge the gap between those two men and between, each, between those two men and each other, but also between those two men and God, which is impossible. Nobody, the Pharisee thinks he can just sort of climb up to God on his own ladder of holiness, which he can't do. And the Pharisee of uh, the tax collector it, is in danger, at least, of saying, like, I'm, I'm just so, so bad, God doesn't even care about me anymore. Yeah. But Jesus brings all of us together and then lifts us all up with him. Anyway, mm -hmm. we were just looking at that, John chapter 12. Yeah. Which says, uh, when I am lifted up, I will draw him into myself. I will draw him into myself. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which he has been lifted up. Mm -hmm. And he wants to draw. He wants to draw all of us in. Everyone. Yeah. Is that a good place to wrap up? No, I, I think so. Yeah. Okay. I will pray. Okay. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, God, thank you for being present in our lives today. For those who are listening and watching, Sam and me, this very moment. And you're looking at us as we are praying. And as we pray, we pray unworthily but we are striving to be more like Jesus, your son. And sometimes we're lifting ourselves up and sometimes we're, we're hiding in the darkness and not wanting you to see us. But you know and love each one of us as your beloved child. You've called us into a brand new relationship through your son, Jesus. And we thank you because this means that our hearts can be opened. And we pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit to open hearts that may be closed to you, closed in self-righteousness and closed in, in despair. Open our hearts whenever we fall into those temptations so that we know how much you love us. We know that you delight in showing us mercy. And you are drawing us all together as one, drawing us all to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everyone. And a um, special shout out to everyone who's been coming to The Chosen on Wednesday nights. We just had week three on Wednesday, and uh, it was fantastic. Jesus and the little children. Mm. Yeah. There's a quote from Isaiah there, too, at the end, where um, the children are bugging, basically bugging Jesus to tell them what he's up to, because he's, he's just like kind of living in the wilderness. Yeah, yeah. So before his public ministry, I gather, like before he's actually... Right. I think it's sort of set before he actually called his, his apostles and right. went out into ministry. The, the ground is being, or the stage is being set for all that. And there's just some children that he's kind of teaching. And um, they just keep pressing him and pressing him and pressing him. Finally, he gets really serious and he quotes um, Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim liberty to captives and sight to the blind and all those things. And to announce the year of the Lord's favor, hmm. like his last last bit, and that, like we were saying about the suffering servant passage, that prophecy was about Jesus. So he's he's quoting. What I love about that show is that you see Jesus quoting 
the scriptures about himself, mm -hmm. which he does in the Gospels. But um, yeah. it's just something about seeing him do it. It's like, whoa, this guy is the one they prophesied about. And the children probably didn't get it at first, but wow. Like they'd been learning about that Isaiah yes. prophesying the Messiah, and here he is. Yeah. Right? It's just amazing. So it's been quite a, quite a ride so far. Good food. Good community. Good unity. Good laughs. Good laughs. No, I'm not funny, so um, I guess uh, maybe there haven't been any laughs. That's just it. That's like the bug em, as you guys all probably know. See you next week. Sorry, I've got my That was all I had. You took it away from me. Amen. <laughs> At least I think I'm funny. You're funny. I think you're funny, too. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs>